Hi, this is Dave Kroll. Uh, today I'm going to build the, uh, one of the example models or one of the tutorial models from the user's guide um, and this will be the reservoir model. And this is a reservoir that gradually fills up over time with um, uh, inflow from a stream and from rainfall. So I'm going to begin by creating a blank model worksheet. So I click on the new model worksheet here and that, that uh, creates a mo blank model worksheet area. And then I'm going to open up some library windows. So I'm going to open up the item library and the value library, or I'm sorry, the value library and the plotter. So um, it, these may already be open for you. In fact, they probably are because by default Extensim uh, open, has those installed with those opening automatically. But on the offhand chance that, uh, that you've changed the default, I'm going to open libraries. So I'll say open library and I pick the value library. And again, under the library menu, open library and then the plotter library. I'm also going to set the runtime for the simulation. And I do that under the run simulation setup. And I'm going to say this is 36. And this is for months, days, hours, weeks, months. Okay, so I'm going to run the simulation for 36 months. Uh, now, the, the uh, tutorial in the, in the user's guide has a little different method of entering libraries. It goes into the library menu and then you pick the individual blocks and drop them in one at a time. But I like to, to pull them in from the library window itself. So I'm going to open the plotter library window. So it's under the library menu, uh, value, sorry, open the value library window, a library value, open library window. And now I can just drag the blocks in from this library. So I'm going to start with the lookup table block, put that up here over here, and then a, uh, a random number block. and the math block, and this will sum the, the value of the lookup table block and the, the random number block. A holding tank, and this represents the reservoir filling up over time. And then I'm going to plot out the contents of the holding tank with a, uh, an I.O. plotter, so change to the plotter library and grab an I.O. plotter. Just switch this back to the value library. Uh, the next thing I need to do is connect the blocks together. And you notice that each of the blocks has these little handles on them or connectors. And this is where I can interface between uh, the various blocks in the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output of the lookup table and connect it to one of the inputs on the math block. So if I hover the mouse over the output of the lookup table, you'll see it turns into a drawing pen and I can drag it over to the math block. And you see, as I drag it over, it becomes a thicker line. And that means I have a valid connection at that point. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the random number block. So I'm going to, to go from the random number block to the math block. And now again, I have a valid connection. If I let go, uh, I'm, I'm connected. I'm going to go to the uh, uh, from the math block to the holding tank block and from the holding tank block on out to the plotter block. And this would be the contents of the holding tank here. Now each block in Extensim has a, a dialog. And in the dialog, you enter the parameters for the model. To get to the dialog, I double click on a block. So I'm going to go to the lookup table block and I'm going to double click on it. And this opens up the dialog for the block. In this case, this has a table. I've got an input value and the corresponding output value for the input value. Now, lookup tables can either be time-based or based on an input value. In this case, I want it based on time because I have a um, uh, rainfall that varies by month of the year. So I've changed that to time. I've got a table of rainfall. Now Right by, by default, I've got just 10 rows in this table. I've got 12 months in the year, so I need to increase the number of months. I can do that by clicking on this uh, plus or minus button, and you'll see this in many tables. This is where I can change the number of rows and sometimes the number of columns in the table as well. So uh, I've currently got 10 rows in the table. I want to change this to, to 12, and two columns is, is all I need for this particular example. Now, I could enter all that data manually, but I'm a little lazy. Um, I've already got it in Excel, so I'm just going to copy it from Excel. And, and this is not part of the tutorial, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm saving myself and, and, uh, and all of us a little bit of time here. So I've copied that in Excel. If I select the table, then I paste this. Uh, there's my information. I, I could also paste link this, which is, is pretty neat. Uh, that means if it changes in Excel, it automatically changes in Extensive and vice versa. So the two files are linked. But I've just done a straight copy paste. I'm also going to repeat this table every 12 months uh, because again, there's 12 months in a year. We're running it for for three years so, or 36 months, so we'll need to repeat this uh, three times. 
Now, uh, another thing I can do is label that, that table up there. So I'm going to type in some, some labels for the top of the table. I'm going to call that month. And I, I separate each column with a semicolon and call it rainfall in inches. And now when I come back here, we'll see that it says month up here and rainfall in inches. I'm also going to label the block. So each block has a, a label uh, in its lower left-hand corner next to the, the help button. The help gives you help on, on, on that particular block. Uh, I'm going to label that as rainfall. Okay. So when I click OK now, we can see our block is labeled rainfall, and we've got a rainfall in inches for each month of the year. Our random number block... If I open the dialog on that, you see I've got a uniform distribu uh, real distribution between 0 and 1. This happens to be the setting that, is, that I want. And I, I guess we got pretty lucky in this case, because it's not often that you open up a, a blocks dialog and you've got exactly the data you need. But in this case, we do. So our, uh, I'm going to enable the, label this as a stream. Uh, and we're done with that. Now, our math block, this is another block where I won't need to change, but I can also open up the dialog here, and I can pick from any one of a variety of, of functions. They're actually down below what you can see here, but you get an idea of what there are. Let me show you another trick, though. If I, if any block with this little turned-up corner, if I right-click on that, then I can also pick what it does. So it's handy for blocks that just do one kind of simple function, like a math block or a decision block, which is this kind of greater than or equal to or less than uh, decision. Um, these can save some, some time. In, in that area. So it's already set up for the add, which is what we need. In the uh, holding tank block, uh, we want our, our inputs to be uh, integrated with delay and our initial contents to be zero. And we're going to label this as reservoir. So now we're done. We've uh, completed the model. We've connected our, our, uh, our plotter up, um, but let's, let's change some labeling on the, on the plot itself here. So we're going to change value to inches. This is the number of inches in the reservoir. And our plotter I.O. is going, we're going to change this to reservoir model. And time will change to months. Uh, contents was automatically created for us, but we can rename that as well if we wanted to. So let's run the model and see what happens. Uh, click on the run simulation, double click on the plotter, and we can see our uh, reservoir over time. And we can see this change just slightly with each time I run because we've got slightly different random numbers each time. So let's say we want to see not only the contents of the reservoir, but whatever's coming in from our lookup table block. Remember, the lookup table block is representing our rainfall. Let me just create some space here. So there's some other ways we can make connections. One thing we can do is create a multi-segment connection. So if I draw from this rainfall block and just kind of leave it out there in the middle of nowhere, I've got a, a connection to nowhere. And I can connect from the end of that to somewhere else, and then I can connect that to our, uh, our plotter. I can run this again, and now we'll see those two values against each other. So there's our, our, rain, our uh, uh, rainfall by month of the year, and then the contents of the reservoir by month of the year. Now, this isn't very pretty. I've got this connection line that's crossing another connection line, so I may want to have a little more sophisticated way of showing that connection. So I'm going to double-click on this to select it, right-click, and clear all those connections. I'm going to use something called Named Connections. And named connections allow me to kind of have a hyperlink from one point in the model to another point in the model. To create a named connection, I double click on a blank part of the model and I type in uh, whatever I want to call the named connection. So this is rainfall. Change my color here. It's green for some reason. Rainfall. There we go. And I'll connect to my rainfall connection there. Now, if I duplicate this, I can connect this rainfall connection down there. So once I've created the named connection, I can connect to it just like I'm connecting to another connector. Once I've created my named connection, 
I can connect to it just like I would be connecting to another block. So I'll connect to my rainfall here. I double click, I right click and duplicate this, and then I can connect this to the plotter here. So now that makes for a much cleaner model. It's easier to understand if we don't have connection lines crossing all, uh, all over the place like a spider web. I'll do the same thing with the stream here. Um, I'm going to add a name connection for that, so we'll call it stream. I'll duplicate this, and I'll connect that up to our plotter here. And now if I run the simulation and look at the plotter, we can see our, our various plots here. Now, one of the things, if you look at this, it's a little hard to see the actual level of the, uh, the rainfall in the stream because they're so small in relation to the contents of the, of the reservoir. So we can actually plot on multiple axes. So if I click on the Trace Properties tool up here, it gives me a way to control each axis and how it appears. And this little uh, lever here allows me to change which uh, puts a, a second y-axis out there. So if I change this y-axis, um, and let me just rerun to rescale everything for me, now it's much easier to see what's going on. So the rainfall and the stream are on the second y-axis, and the reservoir is on the first y-axis. So that completes the reservoir model. There's lots more we could do with this, um, but this should give you a good idea how to build a, a simple uh, continuous model in Extensive. Thank you very much.